Hey everybody, looks like it's uh, noon my time, uh, so we're gonna gonna get started with this. Um, before I do, uh, I just want to make sure um, the audio is working on my side. Uh, I want to be sure everybody, uh, if you're using the uh, GoToWebinar dashboard, you should have a uh, chat down at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna type in a test here just to see if you guys can see it. This will be uh, just to let me know that I'm not uh, just talking to uh, empty air and uh, and haven't uh, turned on the broadcast uh, properly here. So does anybody have that uh, chat functionality? I just typed a uh, a test in there. I'm going to unmute everybody. If anybody has a, uh, a microphone, just let me know if you can hear me. Anybody out there at all? Can you? Okay. I want to make sure I have at least one person listening. Okay, I see nobody's replied to the uh, chat. Do all you guys uh, have the chat active? I typed in a response. Okay, I've muted everybody so we don't get that uh, nasty feedback. Um, <clears throat> looks like uh, it might be that uh, my chat isn't showing the... Uh, the responses. Um, <clears throat> for now, I'm going to assume that everybody can hear me. Uh, I heard at least one person uh, can. Uh, at the end, when we do Q and A, um, we'll have you guys just use the uh, put your hand up, and then I will uh, unmute you so you can ask the questions uh, in in audio. Since it doesn't look like my chat is working. Uh, with that stated, let's uh, let's get started here. Um, hopefully, everybody can see my screen. We are doing uh, easy VPN this time. Uh, so this webinar is for uh, network engineers, uh, people that, that might want to use this in the real world, people that are getting ready especially for their uh, CCIE security lab. Um, it's uh, one of the, I, I guess, harder to configure topics uh, when, you, when you get it on the lab. Uh, so we're going to try to uh, you know, do a breakdown of the configuration all the little parts and pieces so we understand what they all do uh, so it's hopefully a little bit less confusing I, I know that the configuration when you see it for the first time at least on the server side looks like a big wall of text so like I said we're gonna break down each of the uh, individual configuration components uh, so here's a kind of a breakdown of the topics we're gonna see uh, we'll start out with doing an intro what is EasyVPN uh, hopefully most of you guys have an idea of uh, what that is already um, how to configure the server, how to configure the client, uh, how it differs between uh, configuring it on a PIX or an ASA versus uh, a router. And then we'll be doing some lab demos of the various types of EasyVPN uh, so we can see it. Uh, like I mentioned, at the end, uh, we'll be doing a little question and answer. Um, you know, we'll be doing that, that audio again because my chat doesn't look like it's working. Um, and uh, then I'll direct you to, to some uh, further resources uh, at the end uh, so that after the webinar you can still ask me questions and uh, other members of CC Boot Camp and, and so on. So uh, before we get started here, uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in the IT industry for a little over 15 years and I've been doing uh, strictly network engineering and security engineering for the last 10 or so. 
Um, done a lot of work um, on the Las Vegas Strip. A lot of those, a lot of those networks there. Uh, you know, all the Caesars and Flamingo and and you know the Rio and things like that. Uh, the Wind Stratosphere. Uh, so I do have some experience doing this in the in the real world, not just in the classroom or uh, in the lab. Uh, in addition, um, I don't have my security CCIE. Uh, I uh, passed the lab last time, but uh, failed on the open-ended questions. So, ouch there. Uh, but in any case, I have a uh, a good idea of of how you might see this on the lab, uh, so I can speak from that standpoint as well. So, uh, with with that said, uh, those are I guess a, a little bit of my credentials. Um, let's uh, let's get started here with uh, Easy VPN. All right. So, what is Easy VPN? Uh, the idea behind it is to uh, make the configuration of VPN uh, a, a little easier. Uh, anybody who's ever seen the configuration for Easy VPN might go, "Yeah, that's a little bit of a misnomer. Uh, it, it's not really easy to configure." Um, it, like I mentioned, it does look like a like a wall of text. Uh, the configuration the first time you you look at it, um, a lot of people end up uh, for that reason doing it from uh, ASDM. Uh, or SDM, the, the GUIs on the devices. Um, I'm kind of of the opinion that uh, you shouldn't push the button if you don't know what it does. And so I, I like to do things in the command line or, or at least understand what all of those uh, lines of text do. Uh, so EasyVPN, uh, the whole idea behind it is you centralize policy uh, for your VPN connections on a central head-end device, uh, maybe your you know corporate office or data center. Uh, that policy can then be pushed out to the clients when they connect. The clients have a uh, just you know six or ten lines of configuration on them, uh, and that makes it a lot easier uh, to roll out clients. Uh, this is particularly helpful uh, when you've got a lot of remote access clients, the software clients, as well as uh, you want to send out you know say you have uh, 200 branch offices around the US and you want to send them all out an 800 series router so they'll uh, connect up you can pre-configure those send them out all the person has to do is plug them in and they'll automatically connect up and, and have a VPN tunnel rather than having to manually configure all of those devices on site so that's the the easy part that's why it's easy you do a little bit of upfront work configuring the server and after that the clients are, are next to nothing to configure Okay, so the Easy VPN server, like I mentioned, is a is a head end device, um, and this is the basics of how it works. Uh, you do Ike Phase One, and that works just like a regular site to site IPsec tunnel. Uh, in between Ike Phase One and Two is where kind of all the work happens. Um, you have optionally X auth authentication, uh, so they don't just have a pre shared key like they would with their ISACAMP policy. Uh, there's also a, uh, an additional prompt for username and password. Uh, and, and that gets used most of the time with EasyVPN. Like I said, it is optional, but, but almost everybody uses this. Um, after authentication occurs, uh, Ike mode configuration actually pushes out uh, the rest of the um, rest of the IPsec policy to the device, uh, as well as other things like uh, DNS servers, Win servers, IP address, split tunneling ACLs, and so on. That all gets pushed out in between Ike Phase 1 and 2. Uh, after that Ike mode configuration happens, you move on to Ike Phase 2, negotiate the, uh, the SAs, uh, which were sent by the uh, server, and, and the tunnel is now up. So uh, again, this uses the same basic principles, the same technologies as a site-to-site -site VPN tunnel would. Um, it just has these uh, additional phases here that happen in between Ike Phase 1 and 2. Okay, so what can you use as a, an easy VPN server? Um, the, the answer is almost any iOS router, uh, assuming that you have the right, uh, the right code. Um, so that includes even 800 and 1800 series, you know, which are usually small office, home office uh, type of routers. 
they'll act as an easy VPN server, but uh, the specs on those, uh, you have to check them. Uh, you, can, you can get on Google, and uh, Cisco has a list of them. Uh, they only support so many connections. So if you need a thousand plus uh, clients connected at once, you might want to uh, look at a higher end router. Okay, so the, the clients themselves, um, <clears throat> like it says here, they're usually lower end routers. Uh, you're, you're free to you know, have a, a more powerful router uh, be a client, but again, these are usually not used for site to site type tunnels. Uh, the, their uh, branch offices, uh, you know, small office type things, and, and even software clients. So usually it's lower end routers, 800 series routers. Uh, with the ASAs, only the 5505 uh, can be a, a hardware client for easy VPN. So you can't have a, a 5510 or 5520, uh, something of that nature. Uh, the software clients are, are the Cisco VPN software. Um, hopefully you guys have all seen that, but if you haven't, it's this little uh, Cisco golden lock down here. This VPN client. Okay, so <clears throat> as it says here, the clients just have kind of a basic Ike policy set up. Um, and then a, a little easy VPN config, and we're gonna we're gonna see the config coming up here shortly. Uh, but the rest of the configuration gets pushed out by the server. Uh, so once again, that's the easy part of easy VPN. You don't have to do a lot of work on the clients. All right, the clients themselves uh, run in one of two modes. Uh, the first one is going to be client mode, and with client mode, uh, when you connect up to the server, uh, an IP address gets pushed out to you uh, from a pool that's configured on the server. Everything on the inside of your network from the client's perspective uh, is going to be uh, natted, uh, port address translated uh, to that address. This is uh, by far the most common mode you see with EasyVPN. Uh, the, the other one uh, you don't necessarily see as, as much. Um, so client mode, this is going to be when your software clients connect, uh, and, and even a lot of times when your, uh, your hardware clients uh, connect as well. So the, the second mode here is network extension mode. Um, the addresses aren't going to be translated. Uh, you are going to have uh, a real routable, at least uh, real on your network, uh, routable IP space uh, behind the client. So this is uh, really similar to a site-to-site -site VPN. Uh, you have to have those devices pre-IP'd with uh, something that routes on your network, and you have to route the traffic from your head end uh, across to the client. Okay, so uh, the server itself, here's... Uh, here, here's the deal with it. Like I said, uh, the configuration can be kind of complex, uh, so we're going to break it down into uh, all of its little components here. Um, when you go to configure the server, uh, you need to configure AAA for XAuth, assuming that you're going to be using it. And again, if you're using EasyVPN, you're probably going to be using XAuth. Uh, the ISA account policy, and this is so the client can uh, initiate the, the tunnel. Um, as, as well as, uh, you know, have the XAuth work in between Ike Phase 1 and 2. Uh, the group policy is where you set up all of the settings that you're going to push out to your clients, uh, all of the authentication settings, uh, and things like that. Uh, IP set configuration, um, this is the actual protocol, uh, AES, triple DES, etc., that's going to be used across the tunnel. Uh, and, and this really means a transform set. Uh, and then finally, you're going to apply the configuration somewhere, and you're either going to do that uh, through the use of a crypto map or through uh, dynamic virtual tunnel interfaces. And uh, fear not, we're going to see our configuration and examples of, of both of those both of those methods. 
So the first part of this, triple A, um, again, this is used uh, when you want to do X off. Um, and, and once again, just to be clear with it, it's optional. You don't have to use X off. Uh, you, can, you can skip that, but you probably don't want to. <laughs> you probably want to uh, have people authenticated um, before they make this, uh, this tunnel connection. Uh, this just adds a, an additional layer of protection. You could just use strictly pre-shared keys, uh, but again, what, what happens here is uh, say that you're rolling out uh, you know, all of these remote access clients, uh, hardware clients, etc. cetera. Um, any, anybody know how hard it is to break the encryption on a pre-shared key from the Cisco VPN client? Uh, obviously, you can't answer, but but the answer is uh, it's not very hard at all. Um, you can use a program like Kane Enable or or something like that. Uh, find the little uh, you know connection file uh, and just cut and paste that encrypted password in, and and you'll you'll get the pre-shared key. So the the point I'm getting at there is just using a pre-shared key might not be that secure. Uh, and if an employee leaves or an IT employee uh, you don't want to have to change that pre-shared key on all, you know, thousand laptops that are connecting to this server, or all 200 of your hardware clients, and so on. So uh, again, X auth is a an additional layer of authentication. Okay, so uh, the commands here, not that difficult if you've seen any kind of AAA before. Uh, AAA new model that uh, sets up AAA on the device, uh, and, and this is for uh, iOS router. Uh, AAA authentication login, the name of the group you're going to uh, you're going to create. So you can call it ACS or Easy VPN or whatever you want. And then what method you're going to use to authenticate? You can authenticate locally uh, with a TACAC server, Radius server, uh, and and so on. Uh, and then finally, AAA authorization network. Uh, again, a group name and the method you're going to use. So. No more, uh, no more difficult than that. Like I said, pretty, pretty basic uh, AAA. All right, so here's an example of uh, local authentication. Uh, hopefully, you guys have seen this before as well. Uh, you know, username Cisco, password zero, which means enter this unencrypted, uh, and then Cisco for the password uh, as an example. Uh, you might do this for each person that's going to authenticate. You might have it per uh, per type of device, or you might have one for uh, one for each site, or or whatever. Uh, but it's just the regular username command. So username Cisco, password Cisco, uh, etc. Okay. So the next part of this is setting up your uh, ICE account policy. If any of you guys have set up a site-to-site -site tunnel, this is going to look very familiar. It's absolutely no different than you, you would do for a site-to-site -site tunnel. So you can see down here, Crypto ICE Account Policy 10. That's just the sequence number. Uh, encryption AES, hash SHA, Diffie-Hellman Group 2, authentication pre-share. <clears throat> the, the note down here, uh, and this is important, if you are using pre-shared keys, Ike Phase 1 is going to use aggressive mode. Uh, and of course, the difference between aggressive and, and main mode in Ike Phase 1 is that uh, all of the Ike proposals, uh, Diffie-Hellman algorithm, uh, pre-shared key, etc., cetera, is, is all sent across in the, uh, in the, the first two packets. Uh, so instead of doing a, a three-way negotiation, it does a, a two-way negotiation, uh, and it's a little less secure. So that, uh, that's, that's something to, to note. If you're, if you're worried about using aggressive mode, you don't want to use, uh, use pre-shared keys. Uh, you can authenticate with, uh, with certificates instead. Uh, and of course, that's a little bit more work. You have to set up a, a CA and get a certificate on all the devices uh, and, and so on. Okay, the group policy, this is the main part of the configuration uh, for, for EasyVPN. This is, as it says here, what the, what, where the server is going to do all of its work. So 
you're setting up most of your client settings, and again, that means things like DNS, uh, split tunnel ACLs, wind servers, DHCP information, and and so on. Uh, there there are a lot of settings that you can uh, that you can configure here, and and because of time, we're not going to go through them. Because of time and and boredom, <laughs> we're not going to go through them. Some of them are corner case type of stuff that you wouldn't use that often. And of course, Cisco has very good docs on their website for what each of uh, those settings do. Um, <clears throat> so here's uh, on the next slide uh, a sample configuration uh, with typed out explanations uh, that I put together. Uh, and, and this is a, typically what you'll see uh, for, the, uh, for the group policy configuration. So Crypto Isocamp Client Configuration Group, and then you give it this name. I've called it EasyVPN. Uh, in this case, you're probably going to want to make the name descriptive if you're going to have more than one of these uh, group policies set up. You know, maybe one for Eastern Region, Western Region, uh, etc. You, you got your own naming conventions. I'm sure you can come up with those. Uh, key Cisco one two three. Uh, this is the pre-shared key for the group. So usually you want to use a little bit stronger pre-shared key than, than than something like that 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 would be guessable with a dictionary attack. Uh, you might want to use a, a 16 character random string that you keep in a password vault uh, software or something like that. Uh, ACL 101. So I've set up a, a split tunnel ACL and we'll get into the, uh, the syntax for the split tunnel ACLs and how those work later. Uh, this is just saying push this split tunneling ACL out to the client. A pool, easy pool. Uh, <coughs> This uh, pool has been previously created uh, before we set up this group policy. Uh, and this is what the clients are going to receive when they log in, uh, in, in the case of client mode. And remember, client mode, this IP address gets pushed out to the client and everything gets natted uh, through this IP address uh, for the, the tunnel traffic. Uh, safe password, you'll see this often uh, on hardware clients, at least. <clears throat> what this does is uh, it allows the XAuth credentials uh, to be saved on the client, and that means in the running configuration of the device, uh, startup configuration, running configuration. Uh, the point of that is, uh, again, so that you can uh, ship a device out like a 800 series router. Once it gets to the site, they can just plug it in. You don't have to talk somebody on site through typing in the command to manually connect. The device will just, uh, will just connect up. So that's a, a typical uh, group policy. Again, not an exhaustive list of the uh, settings in here, uh, but, uh, but one that you'll kind of uh, typically see. All right, not much to say about the IP set configuration. This is basically your transform set, uh, and it's exactly the same as you would type in for a site-to-site -site tunnel. So crypto IP set transform set called EasyVPN is going to use AES and SHA. Uh, again, very, uh, very typical. Uh, hopefully all, all of the audience that's, uh, that's watching this has probably set up a site-to-site -site tunnel before and, and is familiar with the transform sets. All right, so we've configured uh, all of that, and, and that wasn't all that difficult. Uh, again, once you break down what each section does. Um, <coughs> So just like with a site-to-site -site VPN, uh, you type in all of these things, and they all get pulled together and referenced, uh, usually in a crypto map, uh, and then you apply that crypto map to an interface. So same concept here. Um, you can uh, tie together the group policy, uh, the transform set you're using, the peer you're going to connect to. All of that uh, stuff uh, is going to be put together in a crypto map. <coughs> or there's an additional way to do this. Um, and again, this tends to be one of the confusing topics on the, the CCIE lab. <coughs> uh, dynamic virtual tunnel interfaces. Uh, this is used for a, a little bit more uh, advanced configurations. So let's say that uh, your western region is going to use voice over IP, and you want one QoS policy to be applied to, to them uh, so their voice traffic gets priority across these tunnels. Uh, and, and for your east, 
uh, you're not going to be using VoIP phones, but you are going to be using video, so you want a different QoS policy to be applied to those clients. That's what dynamic virtual tunnel interfaces get used for. Um, <clears throat> you basically create a virtual interface uh, that's a, a template uh, for each of these uh, connections. Uh, the, the group policy uh, gets applied to that virtual tunnel interface. Um, when a connection is made, uh, an individual virtual interface is spawned using the settings from, from the virtual tunnel. Uh, and that includes things like, again, QoS policy or uh, different login credentials or what have you. Um, and again, you can, you can use that so you can have different groups of clients having, having different, uh, different tunnel settings. So basic easy VPN, yeah, uh, the crypto map works and it works fine. Um, if you need to get a little bit more advanced or granular, uh, then dynamic virtual tunnel interfaces uh, might be uh, what you're looking for. And we'll, we'll see uh, examples of this, uh, you know, the configuration put up uh, on these slides, uh, as, as well as uh, when we do the practical uh, lab demo. You guys will get to see how that works. Okay, so um, <clears throat> there's a, a two-part configuration uh, for the crypto map. Uh, first, you create a dynamic crypto map, and that's going to set the transform set, and if you want, uh, reverse route injection. Then you're going to do the crypto map itself, which is going to uh, reference that dynamic crypto map. So use this, uh, use this transform set, and use reverse route injection. Um, as well as referencing the uh, the triple A uh, commands, or uh, you can do it another way. Let's see if I can uh, clear off these drawings here. Um, you can set up a uh, authentication, authorization, uh, group policy, etc. <coughs> reference that different group policy in an isocamp profile and then the isocamp profile can be referenced in the dynamic crypto map uh, and then that in addition <laughs> gets referenced in the crypto map it, it sounds like you're doing a lot of steps there but it'll all become clear when uh, you see the configuration example it's really not that hard and again it gives you a little bit more flexibility um, <clears throat> if you don't need to go quite as far as per tunnel uh, you know, dynamic virtual tunnel interface configurations. Uh, but you do want to have, uh, like I said, maybe uh, different settings for remote access clients versus hardware clients, uh, et cetera. You can, you can do it this way. Okay, so uh, I, I know talking about all of that in a lump uh, might confuse the issue, so it's always easier if you see the actual configuration and go through it. So this is your standard plain Jane, uh, easy easy VPN server configuration uh, as far as the crypto map uh, part of it goes. <clears throat> so remember, it's a two-part thing. You got to do your dynamic crypto map. So crypto dynamic map, easy VPN ten. Set transform set easy VPN. Obviously, you had to have previously created that. Um, and then reverse route. And again, this is reverse route injection. Um, so what this is going to do is when each client connects, a route for the IP address that they're assigned, a uh, static route, is going to be generated. You can then like do a redistribute static into uh, EIGRP or OSPF, whatever is running on your corporate network, uh, and everybody will have a route to that. Um, whether you use reverse routing or not, that depends on your uh, your network configuration. <clears throat> if uh, you know you have just a default route pointing out to uh, the internet, and this uh, Easy VPN server is your internet facing device, okay, great. Then you don't need reverse routing because everything is going to go out that way anyway. Um, in many cases, uh, in enterprise networks, you have more than one egress point to the internet. You know, you might have uh, a firewall or a set of firewalls that goes out to the internet for regular internet traffic. Uh, you might have a 
solely VPN only device uh, that everybody VPNs into. Uh, in a case like that, yeah, you might want to use reverse routing, or you know, you can always uh, static route to that device for the uh, subnets you're going to assign for your easy VPN. It's it's up to you. I mean, that's that's standard uh, network engineering stuff. The reverse route is fairly easy uh, because again, it it does it for you. Just whenever the client connects a static route for that particular IP address. Uh, so it just does a, you know, 32-bit mask, a host address, a host route uh, for each individual client that connects. Okay, so back to our, uh, back to our configuration here. Uh, we did the dynamic crypto map. Now we're going to do crypto map, name it EZ, client authentication list, EZ. Uh, this list here is what you set in your AAA authentication uh, setup uh, earlier on when we were doing the server. So that's just that's just referencing that, and this is just going to be like I said, radius, tacax, or local. Uh, crypto map easy isocamp authorization list easy, and again that's uh, what we created in our AAA setup. Uh, that AAA authorization network statement that's referencing this. Uh, crypto map easy client configuration address respond. Uh, this one uh, again is one of those things that is confusing when you when you see it. What does respond mean? All it means is <coughs> when these clients connect up, they're going to ask for an IP address. Um, assuming that you're assigning IP addresses and not using network extension mode, uh, this means that the server will hand out an IP address. So you don't need this line if you're doing network extension mode, but you do need it for uh, for client mode. <coughs> okay, so uh, those are the three lines that we need uh, in the crypto map. Uh, then crypto map EZ1, IPsec isocamp, dynamic, easy VPN. And what that does is it ties this uh, dynamic crypto map to the uh, to the crypto map itself, and and that's it as far as the crypto map. Um, you'll notice that unlike a site-to-site -site VPN, um, there's no set peer in here. Obviously, the reason for that is the peers could be coming from any IP address. That's why we use the uh, the crypto dynamic map. Um, it says uh, IP addresses can or client clients can come from any IP address. All right, so once you've done all of that, created your crypto map, uh, referenced the dynamic crypto map, go to an interface, serial 000 in this case, <coughs> uh, apply the map with crypto map and the name of the map, uh, and at that point, the server's up and ready to accept uh, requests from clients. You uh, should see a pop-up if you're on the console and have console messages or, or if you're you know, SSH'd in and you set terminal monitor. You'll see a pop-up saying ISACAMP is on. Uh, and again, at that point, you're ready to receive uh, the, the, the clients. Okay, uh, we mentioned earlier that if you wanted to do different group policies for different uh, people, uh, you know, maybe one for remote access clients, and one for uh, one for your hardware clients, or one for marketing, and one for engineering, or you know whatever. Um, you can at that point uh, <coughs> use the uh, the ISACAMP uh, profiles. So in, in this case, we're only creating one ISACAMP profile. Uh, crypto ISACAMP profile. I called it EZV. You are going to match identity group, which means this ISACAMP profile will be using the group EasyVPN. Uh, instead of having this in the crypto map, you put the authentication list and the authorization list in this ISACAMP profile as well, uh, and, and the client configuration address respond. Uh, so you could create a second ISACAMP profile, reference a, uh, a different identity group, which again, that's the, uh, the group policy. Uh, Then under your crypto map, uh, do your uh, do your dynamic map instead of instead of just setting the transform set and reverse route, um, we also set an ISACAMP profile. 
here's the actual crypto map itself, crypto map crypt 10, IPsec ISA camp dynamic easy VPN. You could very easily uh, on the next line say crypto map crypt 20, the, the next line down. Um, the same thing, but a but a different uh, a different dynamic uh, dynamic map with a with a different group policy attached to it. Uh, so in that way, they they would get uh, they would get checked in in order. Um, we'll see later on the clients where you set what uh, what group you're trying to connect as. But again, this is a way to have more than one group policy, each with different settings. Um, be available on the same same device. All right, dynamic virtual tunnel interfaces. <coughs> so a, as I mentioned, you're going to create these virtual interfaces. Uh, each of the virtual interfaces have to be tied to a physical interface. So uh, the the peers are going to connect to the physical interface's IP address, um, but depending on how the ISACAMP profile is set up for each of those virtual interfaces, again, you can apply different policy, and, and that usually gets used to uh, to do uh, to do QoS. Uh, the other time this uh, might get used is when you have uh, different types of uh, of VPN tunnels terminating on the the same uh, same interface and the same device. So you might have uh, your uh, DMVPN hub router uh, already up and, and running some site-to-site -site tunnels, but you want your remote access to use EasyVPN. In a case like that, you could use dynamic virtual tunnel interfaces uh, as well. So both of those technologies could be running on the same, uh, same device. OK. so. Here's uh, just a uh, an example of that. I've set my drawing up. Here's our group policy. Uh, we create a, a group called Easy Group. Has a regular pre-shared key, a pool uh, of addresses, and we set save password up. This is going to be used for hardware clients, for example. Uh, set up the ISACAMP profile. This one's called Easy Profile. Um, <clears throat> match identity group easy group, which means use this group policy for this ISACAMP profile. Again, set up the authentication list and the authorization list. Configuration address respond. Again, we're going to be in client mode. Um, then finally, virtual template one. So <clears throat> this is uh, uh, how you tie this ISACAMP profile which uh, is already tied to this group policy uh, to a particular virtual interface. So we're going to be uh, tying this to virtual interface one. Okay, got to create a transform set still because we're still going to be encrypting traffic. <coughs> so our transform set here is called EZTS. It's going to use AES and SHA. Um, <coughs> Instead of creating a crypto map, we're going to create an IPsec profile. Uh, this one's called Easy Profile, and we'll set the transform set in, in, in there. So this takes the place of the uh, the crypto map. All right, here's the virtual interface itself. Interface virtual template one type tunnel. Uh, so again, this is this is virtual interface number one, and that's what we referenced in our uh, our ISACAMP profile. <coughs> IP unnumbered serial 001. Uh, the unnumbered means we're not giving this interface a static IP address. We're going to use whatever IP address is configured uh, on the uh, on the tunnel itself, or excuse me, on the physical interface itself. Uh, so we set the tunnel mode to IPsec IPv4. Uh, we're going to be using IPsec, and then finally. Tunnel protection will use our IPsec profile, Easy Profile, and and that's the uh, the profile that we've that we've set up here. So uh, again, <coughs> we are setting up the transform set uh, in this IPsec profile, 
sticking it on the tunnel, that's going to let the tunnel know, okay, uh, we can initiate uh, IPsec tunnels uh, on serial 001 using its configured IP address. Uh, and then just to, to go back one slide here, the ISACAMP profile is tied to the virtual interface uh, using, using this line. So all of that's set up and, and basically uh, ties the group uh, policy and the transform set to that virtual tunnel. Um, <clears throat> what's not shown there and what I mentioned earlier on is on this virtual tunnel interface, uh, you can go in uh, again and set individual QoS policies um, or, or, you know, different uh, uh, access lists, etc. All right, so that was the, uh, that was the server portion. And like I said, don't worry. We're going to uh, we're going to take a look uh, later on at an actual an actual configuration, and we'll see how to verify that it's up and running and and all of that good stuff. So the server has a, a lot to it, a lot of different uh, parts and pieces. Uh, the client configuration is is super easy, and this is where the easy part of Easy VPN comes in. Um, <clears throat> you set up an ISACAMP profile. Uh, or excuse me, an ISACAMP policy, uh, just like you would for a site-to-site -site tunnel. Uh, set up the client configuration, um, and that's where you set up what server you're going to connect to, what the pre-share is, uh, etc. And then inside and outside interfaces. So your outside interface is going to be facing the internet, and your inside is facing your corporate network. Um, once you set both of that, uh, both of those up, uh, you're free to connect. Uh, to the EasyVPN server, and, and as you'll see, there's not really much configuration to it. Okay, <clears throat> uh, it says here, as stated before, the ISACAMP policy is optional. Did I state that? I did. Okay, uh, when you configure your client configuration on your, uh, on your client device, and again, these are the hardware clients we're talking about, uh, you know, like an 800 series router or an 1800 series, et cetera. Um, you don't have to configure an ISACAMP policy at all. There's actually a default list of, uh, of ISACAMP policies when you, when you set up the client uh, that, that will automatically get inserted on, on the router. Uh, generally, you do, though, want to set up an ISACAMP policy, uh, but you don't have to. <coughs> So yeah, the configuration for the ISACAMP policy is standard. Crypto ISACAMP policy 10, authentication pre-share, hash SHA, encryption AAS, group 2, etc. cetera, uh, j just like a site-to-site -site tunnel. Uh, of course, it has to match one of the policies that you have configured on your, uh, on your easy VPN server. Um, unlike a site-to-site -site tunnel, uh, when you configure uh, this thing, uh, you don't need to actually type in a line for the pre-shared key, uh, the crypto ISACAMP key, Cisco address, whatever. You don't have to do all of that. It's all set up in the client configuration. And uh, again, we're gonna we're gonna see that here. <coughs> so here's the uh, here's the client configuration. We we created an ISACAMP policy or didn't? It doesn't matter. Um, crypto IP set client, easy VPN. And we are naming it EasyVPN. Uh, in hindsight, maybe when I created these slides, I should have called that something more descriptive or something less confusing. But that last uh, word there is the uh, the actual uh, name of the uh, of the group uh, that you're connecting with. Okay, so it's called EasyVPN. Uh, Connect Auto. Um, uh, again, I always look at this from the perspective of I'm going to pre-configure this device, uh, you know, at my desk, and I'm going to ship it out to one of 200 locations around the U.S. I just want them to be able to plug it in. So Connect Auto is what that's for. <clears throat> Assuming this thing is powered up and has an IP address and, and so on, it'll just automatically try to initiate the tunnel. You can set it to manual, uh, but you're going to have to have somebody on site uh, to get on the router console itself and, and type in uh, manually. 
uh, the command to connect uh, and put in the username and password. That's fine if you have on-site IT staff and, and you don't want this uh, router to fall into uh, uh, somebody's hands and have them be able to connect to your network. Um, either way, it depends on what your, what your policy is. Uh, <coughs> group, easy VPN, key, Cisco 123. Uh, this is the group that's configured on your server uh, and the pre-share key that's configured on your server. So that group policy that we created on the server, that is what this is referencing. So obviously that stuff has to match both the group name uh, and the pre-share key. So this pre-share key here is in lieu of your regular site-to-site -site tunnel like configuration where you would type in a key. Uh, mode client and you could also use network extension if you were using that. Uh, we'll see an example of that later but this is the, the client mode where uh, it's going to request an IP address and NAT everything through that IP. Uh, peer, 20.1.1.2. In this case, that's the, uh, the address of the EasyVPN server. Obviously, uh, it's usually going to be an internet routable public address. I just used uh, uh, the one that I set up in my lab. Username Cisco, password Cisco. Um, you only have to put this in here if you're going to uh, connect automatically. If you're going to be connecting manually, you're going to type uh, the username and password into the console. Um, because I am going to uh, have this set up to connect auto, I, I put the username and password uh, in here. Uh, yes, this is in clear text, by the way, so don't give the uh, people at the branch office access to the router. Uh, XAuth user ID mode local. Uh, again, <clears throat> this is for when you want to uh, connect uh, automatically. It means that the uh, XAuth credentials, the username and password we have above here, is going to be stored locally. All right, so to actually apply this, um, you just need to uh, set your inside and outside uh, interfaces. Again, your outside interface, um, unless you're doing this over a private network, is going to be your internet facing interface. So that command is crypto IP set client easy VPN. The name of the uh, uh, client policy that we just set up on the last page uh, and inside. Uh, so this is your inside facing your corporate network. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the tools here. <laughs> um, here's my internet facing interface, serial 001, and crypto IP set client easy VPN and easy VPN. Uh, you don't have to say outside, <coughs> uh, you just have to type in the, the name and you didn't type inside. There's only uh, only two choices. Uh, so good, you can you can see here you've uh, you've configured this and assuming that you have uh, set up to connect auto like I did on the last slide, um, the router is instantly going to uh, try to uh, try to make the connection. Um, it'll it'll come up assuming that you've uh, you've configured everything correctly. All right. On the uh, on the ASA, uh, you can set up. Uh, well, it says here an ASA can also be either a VPN server or a client. Uh, only the ASA 5505 can be a client. I mentioned that in the beginning of the uh, uh, the presentation. Um, so <coughs> there there are some similarities uh, in the configs. Uh, I'm showing. Uh, the uh, 8.0 code uh, because that's what they're currently using on the CCIE lab uh, and, and that's what I'm uh, <clears throat> what I'm familiar with uh, I don't think there's a, a lot of changes uh, until you get to I, I don't think there's a lot of changes uh, to to this but uh, I, I'm not running uh, 8.3 or 8.4 in any of my uh, uh, any of my customers that I work with or, or labs uh, in the Q&A, if anybody is, they can, they can you know, speak up. <clears throat> All right. So uh, your ISA account policy, your uh, IP pools, uh, split tunnel ACLs, transform sets, et cetera, those are typed in just like, uh, just like in iOS. So th there's the, uh, the similarities. Um, 
the ASA uh, for all kinds of VPN connections uses group policies and tunnel groups instead of that uh, group policy being set in the crypto isocamp client uh, so here, here's an example of the of the group policies some of the differences uh, group policy easy VPN internal uh, so that means uh, internal means the group policy is configured on the device itself not on like a remote radius server uh, once you've done that it's uh, created you can then go group policy the name easy VPN and attributes uh, that drops you into a sub configuration mode where you can set up the address pool whether you're going to use split tunneling or not uh, if you're using split tunneling what the uh, split tunnel ACL uh, is <clears throat> and then things like password storage enable uh, which like it says here lets uh, clients store the password locally okay so when the client puts in uh, that group name in his client configuration uh, <clears throat> instead of it being the group policy it's actually what's called a uh, tunnel group and again if you've ever done site-to-site -site tunnels on an ASA you're familiar with tunnel groups already uh, with the site-to-site -site tunnels the the tunnel name is usually the IP address or uh, if you're using pre-shared keys it has to be the IP address of the peer here it doesn't have to be because it's a remote access tunnel group so you can just give it a name so here's how you create those tunnel group easy VPN type IPsec RA, so remote access. Uh, tunnel group easy VPN general attributes. The default group policy for this tunnel group will be easy VPN, and that's the group policy we created on the last page. Tunnel group easy VPN IPsec attributes. Uh, and under the IPsec attributes, that's where you set your uh, set your pre-shared key. Uh, you can also set up the the CA the trust point that you'll use if you're doing uh, certificate authentication uh, here as well okay so uh, once you've uh, set the group policy um, and set up the tunnel group you're going to uh, apply it uh, and and like it says here very similar to doing the uh, the crypto map version on IPS you create a dynamic crypto map uh, you set up your transform set and reverse routing if you want it under that dynamic crypto map you reference that dynamic crypto map in the regular crypto map and apply that to the uh, the interface um, <clears throat> there's no virtual tunnel interfaces on the uh, on the ASA um, and, and of course QoS is is much more limited on the ASA uh, than it is on uh, on an iOS router uh, so kinda pick your poison there do you want to terminate this on an ASA kinda depends on what configuration you need do you need you know granular QoS if so do it on a router um, if not you're fine doing it on the ASA so here's uh, here's an example uh, crypto dynamic map easy VPN 5 set your transform set easy VPN set it to use reverse route then create a normal crypto map easy VPN 10 uh, <clears throat> referencing the dynamic crypto map finally uh, isocamp enable outside that turns on isocamp that's a very common thing that people forget uh, you know they do this whole configuration for easy VPN apply a crypto map to an interface it doesn't work Ah, what's happening? It doesn't work. Maybe my settings are wrong. Show crypto isocamp. No isocamp SAs. What's happening? I know I have this set up right. It's because you forgot this command. You have to enable isocamp on the interface that the uh, clients are going to be connecting to. So remember that in real life. Remember it on the CCIE lab, uh, etc. So here's how you apply it to a uh, an interface: uh, crypto map, easy VPN, interface outside. It's that simple. Um, of course, if you want, uh, you can do uh, different group policies um, and have different lines in your crypto map. Uh, like I said, one for hardware clients, one for remote access clients, uh, etc. Uh, final note here: remember to NAT exempt traffic 
from your inside network to the client addresses. Uh, the firewalls are, of course, almost always going to be connected to the Internet. Usually when you're doing that, you're natting traffic um, so that all of your inside hosts can get out to the Internet and surf the web and, and all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> if you're not nat exempting the traffic, uh, it's not going to go through the tunnel. It's just going to get, uh, it's just going to get natted um, and sent out to the Internet where it will be dropped because you're using private addresses. This note is not just for ASAs. If you are, are doing NAT on your iOS router that you're using uh, as an easy VPN server, uh, you're going to have to NAT exempt as well. Um, NAT, NAT exemption is fairly easy on an ASA. Um, on an iOS router, you uh, have to do it in your uh, NAT statement, uh, referencing a, a route map which references an ACL. If you have to do that and that's not clear or uh, you need more information, Google it. There's plenty of examples on how to do it, um, or you can uh, <clears throat> you can get on our uh, our forum and, and ask me or uh, or some of the other people there. I'll I'll show the forum at the end of the presentation. Okay, uh, Easy VPN client on the uh, on the ASA. Uh, we've mentioned before it's only 5505s, little baby ASAs. Uh, and it's done by using the VPN client commands. So here's uh, an example config, uh, and, and I will uh, say that I have uh, not used the uh, 5505s as a client myself uh, in the in the real world or even in a lab. Uh, so this example is straight out of the uh, the Cisco docs, but it'll probably work. Um, so VPN client server, whatever the IP address of your server is. And again, I used a private address, but it's going to be a real internet address in the real world. Uh, VPN mode client, or it could be network extension if you're using network extension mode. VPN client VPN group easy VPN uh, password Cisco. So <clears throat> that's your uh, easy VPN group on the server, your, your uh, uh, tunnel group, uh, and the pre-shared key for that tunnel group. VPN client username Cisco password Cisco, um, and again that's uh, your your X auth credentials, uh, and then finally VPN client enable, and that turns on turns on VPN. Uh, like I said, I haven't done this one myself. Um, <coughs> the uh, Easy VPN hardware configurations or hardware clients that I've used have all been routers, uh, so somebody can uh, speak up in the in the Q and A session at the end if they've uh, if they've done this. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> that's it for the the lecture part of the presentation. Now let's now let's see how this uh, this actually works. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do this first uh, with uh, <clears throat> uh, kind of a small network here. Router one is going to be our hardware client, and router two will be the Easy VPN server, uh, and then we have some routers uh, on the respective corporate networks uh, for, for each of these uh, devices and they're basically going to be acting as hosts. So router 3, uh, think of it as a PC you know, connecting to some servers or something. I got a couple of loopback addresses on router 4. Um, the 30 network back here uh, as well. Uh, if all goes well here with these configurations, and they should because I pre-configured them and tested them, uh, <clears throat> then once uh, router 1 connects to router 2, uh, router 3 should be able to ping into, uh, into these networks uh, and then the return traffic should go back. So uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Let me get connected to uh, all the devices here. Got them booted up. I just want to make sure that they're still uh, on and responding. Hey, there's router one. I got timed out, so I have to clear the console lines from my uh, remote access server.
Okay, you don't have to memorize that Visio that I put up earlier. I'll, I'll reference back to it uh, throughout the rest of this uh, the rest of this demo. <clears throat> okay, normally in a class at this point, I would quiz you on uh, what configuration we need to do uh, first. But again, we're kind of limited uh, with the uh, with the chat functionality. I'm just gonna click on it one more time here to see if I got anything. Uh, yeah, still no, still no chat. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not gonna, not not gonna quiz you and try to get you to remember. Um, I'll just uh, show you the uh, the configuration. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, first, we're gonna do basic easy VPN, and uh, again, I have these uh, pre-configured in Notepad, uh, which I think is the best way to type in uh, commands. Uh, lets you easily edit them. Uh, and, and see them as a whole, rather than uh, you know putting them in the router and uh, and then doing a bunch of show commands and section commands and so on. So if you recall, uh, we had to set up AAA. So here we go, AAA new model, um, authentication login. Uh, we're calling this easy, and we're going to be doing local um, just for the ease of ease of use here. I'm not going to use a, a radius server or something like that. Uh, AAA authorization, network easy, and local as well. So pretty pretty basic stuff there. Um, <clears throat> if you recall from our uh, Visio here, router two is going to be the server. So we'll go to router two and paste that stuff in. Um, next up, uh, since we're doing local, I'm going to need a uh, local username and password. Um, that the client can can reference can log in with uh, when we do the X auth authentication. Uh, so yeah, I got that pre-configured here as well. Username Cisco password Cisco. So that takes care of our AAA setup. Fairly basic, and it's not too much harder. Even if you wanted to use uh, TACAX or Radius, uh, you would just have to do the TACAX server host, whatever the IP address is and the key, um, and, and then set this line here up to be group TACAX or uh, group RADIUS. Okay, next part of our configuration, ISA account policy. Uh, pretty basic here as well. I'm using AES and SHA because I like to use the, the most secure stuff available. Uh, using Diffie-Hellman group 2 and we'll be using a pre-shared key. Again, uh, much easier. I don't want this to become a presentation on uh, setting up a CA uh, even though it's not that hard. This will cut down on the confusion. <clears throat> okay, I'm creating an ACL here. Um, mentioned earlier on in the presentation that we talk about split tunnel uh, ACLs, and and this is how they work. Uh, you set up your access list with permit statements uh, for the networks that you want to protect. These are not the client side networks at all. It's just uh, permit IP from your corporate network, from your corporate network, from your corporate network to any. That's how you do the split tunnel ACLs. Um, <clears throat> I, I know it might sound a little bit backwards uh, because uh, you're thinking in terms of the client uh, that this is getting pushed out to. You know, the client would be coming from itself, whatever its network is, to the corporate network. So remember that little that little trick or whatever you're configuring the server it's from the perspective of the server we want to encrypt traffic coming from the corporate network going to anywhere so I'll paste the uh, the ACL in the split tunnel ACL and again that's going to be referenced later on during the the group policy setup uh, the pool configuration uh, we didn't see this earlier either uh, we just saw it referenced within the client configuration but it's really easy to set up. IP local pool, the name of the pool, starting IP address, ending IP address. Really, really simple. Hard to hard to mess that one up. Okay, uh, here's our uh, our client configuration. Um, so we're going to create this uh, group policy, uh, client configuration group called Easy VPN. The pre-shared key will be Cisco 123. And once again, normally, in a site-to-site -site tunnel, you would type that after you did your ISACAMP policy. Uh, crypto ISACAMP key, Cisco, you know, whatever address. Instead, we're putting it here in the client configuration. 
ACO 101 means we will be using split tunneling and we will use this ACL for split tunneling. Uh, that's the ACL that we just created a few steps ago. If you don't put this line in here, you won't lose, use your split tunneling <coughs> and all of, uh, all, all of your traffic for the client will be attempted to be tunneled through the, the network. Whether you use split tunneling or not is up to you. If you don't want to use it, you just don't put this ACL line in. Uh, pool, easy pool is simply the, the pool here that we created above. That means uh, clients using this group will receive one of these addresses. Um, and finally, uh, save, uh, save password. That allows us to, uh, to locally save the, uh, the password here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to paste that in. Um, <coughs> okay, uh, crypto IPsec transform set, easy VPN. Again, if you've done a site-to-site -site tunnel before, uh, this is not a not a big deal. It's just the just the transform set we're going to use. Okay, if you remember, uh, we're going to do the basic setup here, which is just done with the crypto map. So here's our dynamic crypto map, which is going to set the transform set. And yes, we're going to use reverse route. Um, if you uh, get on here in router 4, that's our client on the corporate network back here. He just has his. Uh, his connected routes. <clears throat> and you can see here that he's running EIGRP. He's uh, peered up. Uh, with uh, with router uh, router two or uh, yeah router two, which is our server. Uh, Right now, he only knows connected routes. <coughs> uh, assuming we're properly setting up uh, reverse route injection, router four should get the uh, client pool addresses uh, when they when they connect. So we'll we'll be sure to check that once we uh, once we get these connected up. Okay, um, here's our our regular crypto map, and again, we're going to set the authentication list to EZ. That's up here. We are going to set the authorization list to easy, and again, we created that up here. Uh, client configuration address respond. Remember, that means that this server is going to hand out IP addresses from the pool that we created here. So let's uh, let's paste all of that in. Uh, finally, and this is only if you are going to uh, do uh, reverse route injection, uh, we need to set up EIGRP to redistribute those static routes into EIGRP. Um, I just used a bogus metric here just to, to have something in there. That's because uh, EIGRP requires a, a metric for redistribution. Uh, the final step here, of course, is to apply the crypto map to an interface should see a pop-up here, yep, telling me Isocamp just came on, and uh, this server is ready to rock and roll, uh, assuming that I didn't make any mistakes in my config there. So, <coughs> serial 001 is our uh, 20 network here that's uh, going to be connected over to the, uh, the client itself. All right, here's the client configuration. Again, it's, it's really easy. Uh, just a, a few lines, and you could you could easily cut and paste this, you know, uh, into mass devices uh, if you wanted to roll this out quickly to a bunch of devices. So, crypto IPsec client easy VPN called easy VPN. I know that's confusing, but at least it's in caps to let you know that's the name that I typed in and not a uh, command. Connect auto because I am uh, too lazy to type, uh, you know, three three lines when I want to connect this device up. Group Easy VPN. Uh, again, in the class, I'd be quizzing you, but this command is referencing the group policy on the server, Easy VPN. Obviously, my key has to match what's in that group policy. 
uh, mode client instead of network extension. <coughs> Peer 20.1.1.2, and again, that's the uh, address here of Router 2's uh, serial interface. Uh, username Cisco, password Cisco, those are my stored XAuth authentication uh, credentials, because if you recall, under my client configuration here, I set the save password command, that lets me store credentials. So username Cisco, password Cisco, that matches on the server this username and password. Uh, and finally, XAuth user ID mode local. Again, that means I'm using my, my locally stored credentials to, uh, uh, to connect with. <clears throat> the remainder of this is, uh, I'll go ahead and, and paste this in. Let me paste it in on the uh, correct router here. Okay, so that's all in there. What remains is to apply this, uh, set my inside and outside interfaces. Um, if we go back here, this is my corporate network, so serial 011 is going to be inside. Serial 001 will be outside. And because I've set this to connect auto, uh, as soon as I configure both of these, I should try to connect. So let's, uh, let's see it here. Tells me Isocamp is on. Tells me EasyVPN connection is up. Username Cisco, group EasyVPN. Client public address, that's my address uh, on my internet facing interface. Server's public address is this. And my assigned client address was 1.20. So that's good because it means that the server assigned me the first IP address in that EasyVPN pool. So that's, that's good stuff. That, that generally means you're up and running. Um, <clears throat> you can also see these Loopback 10,000 and NVI zero interfaces get created. Um, if you do a show IP interface brief that uh, NVI is uh, my serial uh, address, my, my outside interface IP address and the loopback 10,000 <coughs> is the address that I was uh, configured on my client. So that's, the, that's that virtual address that all of my inside corporate networks are going to get natted to uh, so I can make my connection over to the other side. Okay, so uh, verification commands for this other than uh, seeing those pop-up messages. Uh, you can do a show crypto ICAMP SA and you should have an SA between you, the source, and the destination, which is the server. Uh, the state should be QM idle, which is quick mode. Quick mode is Ike phase two. Um, if you see QM idle in any kind of IPsec uh, connection, you know that you have uh, gotten through Ike phase one and two. This is what you want to see. Um, if you're troubleshooting this and you see something else in here, like uh, AM init or something like that, uh, th these these first two letters here are the uh, the Ike mode that you're in. So if you see AM and it, that means the uh, aggressive mode, Ike phase one, running in aggressive mode. In it, which is the first uh, first uh, first conversation, first two packets that go from you to the server and back, uh, something went wrong there. And usually that's Ike phase one thing. So the ISAC app policy didn't match, the pre-shared key didn't match, uh, etc. So use these states if you uh, end up uh, end up troubleshooting. Okay, what else can we do to verify? Uh, crypto IPsec client easy VPN. Uh, that's my uh, that's my connection. Sorry. <laughs> Show crypto. That that command that I just showed uh, is how you would manually connect. We're, we're set up to use auto, but if you weren't, you could connect using that that series of commands. It's good that I screwed up and showed that. Okay, so show crypto IPsec client easy VPN. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to get a little bit of information now about uh, the the tunnel. Tunnel name is easy VPN. Here's the inside and outside interfaces. Current state is IPsec active, and that means the tunnel is up and working. Um, here's the address I received, and it was applied to Loopback 10,000. We knew that already. Safe password is allowed, we know that. 
Um, <clears throat> here's my uh, ACL entries for split tunneling. And again, this lets me know connecting from me to go to any of these IP addresses and subnets uh, that, that I'll be encrypted. It also tells me my, my current peer. So there's a, a little bit of information about what I got from the, uh, from the server when I connected. Uh, the final command here, uh, and, and maybe not the final, there's a few commands you can do. You can do a show crypto IPsec, show crypto session is the one I was thinking of. Uh, <clears throat> this will, uh, again, for, for any IPsec connection, tells you that, okay, on interface serial 001, that's my outside interface, um, my peer is dot two port 500 that's uh that's isocamp udp port 500 i've got this sa active the ike sa and i've got this ipsec flow uh which is permit ip from host the address i was assigned going to anywhere uh but the real one that i want to show you is uh hopefully a command you're familiar with which is uh show crypto ipsec sa uh i like this command because it has counters on it and counters are a good thing. Uh, so this tells us that I have this, I, uh, this IPsec SA, and I got counters for encapsulation and decapsulation. It tells me for what traffic am I encrypting, uh, and, and so on. <clears throat> OK. Uh, I mentioned on router 4, we were going to check some, some routing stuff. So here's a show IP route. And you'll notice that I now have a uh, external EIGRP uh, route, that means a redistributed route, for 1.20. Um, so that means my reverse route injection works properly, which is good, because it means that router 4, which again we're using as our internal corporate network on the head end side, uh, it'll be able to route the packets back uh, across to the client. So final test, where the rubber meets the road, we're going to try to ping from router 3, which is acting as our host on the remote network, over to these loopback addresses. I'll just uh, pick one of them here. So let's jump on over to router 1, excuse me, router 3. There's too many, uh, too many labs in my head. And we're going to try to ping over to 2222. OK, it was successful. How do we know it encrypted? <laughs> uh, Let's uh, jump back up to router 1 here and do the show crypto IPsec SA. <clears throat> and we can see that our five ICMP packets were encapsulated. They went over to the other side. Five ICMP echo replies came back. They were decrypted and uh, decapsulated. So our tunnel is, uh, is, is up, up and working. So that was the, uh, that was the, the easy version of EasyVPN. Um, <clears throat> real quick here, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, reload routers uh, 1 and 2. Uh, they're going to come back up in their default state, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to show you the, uh, the dynamic virtual tunnel interface uh, version of this. <coughs> okay, so a lot of this is going to look the same. Uh, AAA new model, you know, our uh, authentication lists, I call them local list in this case. Um, still have a local password, still have the same or a, a, a different pool, different, different set of IP addresses. Um, AES uh, and SHA, pre-shared authentication group 2, still have a split tunnel list, it's the same one. Same client configuration, all this stuff is, is, is the same. Where we start to differ here uh, is we have uh, an IC account profile called Easy Profile, matching identity group Easy Group, which means for this profile we'll be using this particular group policy. Uh, here's my authentication and authorization lists up here referenced. Uh, and I'm going to be using virtual template one. So we saw all this in the presentation. Here's my transform set. I created an IPsec profile, again, in lieu of a uh, a crypto map. Here's my virtual template one. 
That's what we're using for this particular ICAMP profile. IP unnumbered serial 001, which again, if uh, we go back here, <coughs> that's going to be our internet facing uh, or where we want the peers to connect to. Uh, tunnel mode IPsec IPv4, and finally, protect traffic using this particular uh, transform set. Um, then I have my redistribute static in here. Uh, <coughs> okay. So uh, I'm also doing a, a virtual template on the client. Uh, virtual template one type tunnel, IP unnumbered serial 001. Uh, under my uh, client configuration here, I'm referencing that virtual interface. Uh, so you can do this on the, the client as well as the server with the, with the virtual tunnel interfaces. <clears throat> Let's see if my uh, routers are back up here. Looks like they are. Okay, so rather than paste in each uh, part individually, I am going to paste the entire thing in over here on router 2. Okay, that's all in there. Uh, Isocamp is on. Virtual template 1 uh, is set to down. Let's uh, grab the configuration here for the client side. And again, it's just going to connect auto because uh, I don't want to type in. Uh-oh, looks like I typed in a uh, typed in the, uh, the peer name wrong here. Connect auto. Ah, my group screwed up there. That was uh, that was a little odd. Not sure what happened there, but uh, once I uh, put that uh, peer address in there correctly, um, <clears throat> you can see that. Uh, my client came up, uh, and, and we can do some of the same type of testing. Show crypto IceCamp SA. Here's my QM idle. That's, uh, that's good news. I can do a uh, show crypto IP set client, easy VPN. Got my split tunnel ACL. Got my address, first address in the in the pool handed out to me. And I can uh I can show my SA. Uh, if I jump over to the server here, I can do a show IP interface brief and uh you can you can see that uh this virtual access, this is this was the uh the the virtual interface that got spawned from my template is uh is up and up. Uh, it, it, it came up there. Um, you could do a show IP route here. Got a static route generated for 192.168.1.50. That's, uh, that's good news. That means reverse route injection is working. I can jump over to my router 4, which is my host. He's got that same uh, reverse route injection uh, address set up. And as, as before, uh, on the client, I can try pinging to uh, one of the loopback addresses. <clears throat> it comes back. I can do a uh, show crypto IPsec SA. Got packets encapsulated and decapsulated, and, uh, and everybody's happy. OK, so. Uh, let me uh, bring my my console up here, um, <clears throat> and we'll uh, actually, you know, what, before we uh, start the Q and A, uh, I want to uh, show you some stuff here. I, I swear I'm not a sales guy, I'm not very good at this, but 
there's a, a special on the, the CCI security uh, training right now. So for just under $2,000, um, you can uh, go to one of our uh, CCI security advanced lab boot camp. Uh, again, this is for people prepping for their CCIE lab. It's a five-day instructor led uh, by uh, one of our one of our CCIE instructors um, going through uh, it's basically a, a five a, a five day monster lab uh, that will hit all of the high points all of the topics uh, in detail that uh, you typically see on the CCIE security lab uh, so if you <coughs> don't want to study everything and you kind of want to get a short list of stuff uh, that you can work with uh, and ask and instruct your questions about. Uh, this is a this is a great class. Um, in addition to the class itself, um, you'll get all of our security workbooks, our foundation workbook. So it lets you touch all the technology. Um, the advanced lab workbook, which is uh, ten mock labs uh, that are uh, pretty close to the uh, the security exam itself. Uh, not not violating the NDA, obviously, but uh, I wrote uh, part of that advanced lab workbook, uh, and, and I've taken the version 3 test, the one that you'll get right now, uh, several times. Uh, so I got a good picture of what's on it. Those are, those are really good workbooks. Uh, you also get 25 sessions of rack time. Uh, that means 25 eight-hour sessions. So that's a, that's a good amount accessing the racks, uh, similar to what, what I'm using here. It uh, has uh, <coughs> multiple ASAs. Uh, two ASAs, ten routers, four switches, an IPS, uh, and, a, and an ACS server. Basically everything you'll need for uh, <coughs> prepping for your exam. So again, that's, that's the end of the sales stuff. If you like, you can contact Jerry. Uh, Jerry's one of our sales guys. Uh, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a good guy. He won't steer you wrong. Um, there's his email address, jerry at ccbootcamp.com, or you can call our 800 number. 877-654-2243. Um, <clears throat> so that's it for the the sales part of it. Uh, again, great uh, great value there. That's a that's a that's an awesome price considering all you get. Um, if you compare that to anybody else out there, you'll you'll find that that's a great price. Um, <clears throat> if you want to view this video, uh, if you didn't catch something the first time I said it, it is going to be available for a limited time on lms.ccbootcamp.com. Uh, you can go there, sign up, uh, and then watch this webinar, uh, as well as other webinars uh, that we uh, do in this series. I think there's an 802.1x one. I did a uh, CCI security uh, troubleshooting section, uh, and, and so on. Uh, so within 24 hours uh, of when I'm done with this, uh, you can access it again by going to that site. Finally. Um, if you want to ask further questions that don't get answered in the Q&A, um, it's likely that that'll happen. We don't have that much time for QA, uh, <clears throat> and I uh, certainly, you know, am not a, an encyclopedia of easy VPN knowledge. Uh, but uh, securityie.com, if you go to that forum, it's very active. Uh, there's there's a ton of experts on there. Uh, current. CCIE students, current CCIEs themselves. Uh, I'm active on there. Uh, Tim Rowley, who's our CCIE security instructor, uh, is active there as well. Um, if you have a question, either about your real network, about the lab, about a particular type of technology, go there, post. Uh, you're going to get responses the same day. Um, I, I love to lab stuff up when people ask me things that I don't know. Uh, so uh, again, post there, and uh, and and we'll get you sorted one way or uh, one way or the other. It's a great resource. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the end of the presentation. Let's uh, let's move on to uh, doing some QA here. Um, <clears throat> again, the the chat doesn't work, but I do have an attendee list here, and uh, there is a uh, raise your hand thing. I can unmute you. Uh, Anybody, uh, anybody have any questions about EasyVPN, about the lab as it currently stands? Uh, you're, you're free to, to use that hand raise, and I'll, uh, I'll unmute you here.
Okay, Aaron. I've got you unmuted, uh, but I can't hear any uh, any audio. <clears throat> yeah, I still uh, I, I'm still not uh, not hearing anything. Okay, I see that the the hand went down there. So anybody uh anybody else have any uh any questions at all? <clears throat> or is it that only one person could figure out how to how to raise their hand? Well, really, uh, you know, f fear not with this stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I, I tried to be thorough in the in the presentation. Um, there are, uh, I, I know it's a kind of a lot of stuff to to take in, um, even even with somebody explaining it to you. I, I would say that uh, as far as Easy VPN goes, um, you know, like I said, I've I've used it in the real world. Uh, let's see here. Ah, I got a chat message. Um, okay, so there's a uh, there's a, a, a questions box. See if you can uh, you can you can type stuff in there. Ah, I see the the chats don't show up in the in the chat portion. Uh, it, it shows up here. Okay, so I'm going to try to uh, uh, expand this a little bit so I can actually. So I can actually see it. I, I do see a, a, a lot of uh, a lot of chats here. Okay, so uh, somebody asked, uh, "Do you need virtual uh, template under the Crypto Isocamp profile?" Uh, yeah, that's that's where you're going to tie the Isocamp profile to the uh, to the virtual template itself. So yeah, you you need that under there. Um, and it says, where should we configure reverse route? Uh, that's that's an interesting question uh, because you'll notice if you take a look at my uh, uh, configuration here uh, for the uh, dynamic virtual tunnel interfaces, uh, nowhere here did I type in reverse route. Uh, so it's automatically, when you're using the dynamic virtual tunnel interfaces, it's automatically generating that, that reverse route, that static route. Uh, again, here, here's my uh, my nothing up my sleeve moment. Nowhere in this configuration is there reverse route configured. Uh, that that just automatically uh, happens. It is important though. You still have to, uh, even though that route or that uh, static route automatically gets generated, you still have to uh, redistribute it into your uh, into your dynamic routing protocol, whether it's OSPF or EIGRP. Uh, somebody else asked, uh, you used AES, uh, but uh, did not specify 128.192 uh, or 256. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, I assume that means under the, under the transform set. Um, Uh, show crypto sessions. Does it show it under there? Doesn't say whether it's using AES or not. <clears throat> I know the uh, uh, ISACAMP policy will will show the the Ike part of it <clears throat> uses one twenty eight. Uh, show crypto IPsec SA. Does that show AES or not? Uh, it doesn't uh, uh, just shows the SPAES. Uh, wh whatever the default is for that uh, is is what it'll be. Um, 
if you want, you can uh, you can post that on Security IE, and we'll we'll lab it up later and uh, uh, see if you can specify it or not. Okay, um, the next one, although just a demonstration, I have a preference on why to use default AS128 versus 256. No, it was just a it was just a demo. So uh, I, I use the default. Um, you can use uh, you can use whatever you you see fit. Um, <clears throat> if if you if you feel like it's not going to put significant load on a, a router to use AES two fifty six, you can you can certainly do that. And I always like to use the the most secure uh, protocol that I have available to me. So that's my that's my preference. Uh, Scott asked a general question here about. Uh, uh, the CCI Security Lab does that lab have the IPS included? Um, <clears throat> if you mean, and and I assume you you can correct me here if I'm wrong. I assume you mean the the CCI Security Lab uh, rather than IOS IPS on on my demo. Um, the Security Lab for sure has IPS in in all of its uh, all of its forms uh, on it. So yeah, you have to prep for that. Okay, so that's the end of the questions that I have listed here. Um, <clears throat> Scott, was uh, was that what you were asking? Were you asking about the uh, the CCI Security Lab in general? Uh, CC Bootcamp Rental Rack, uh, yes, uh, for for both. So um, when you come to our classes live, uh, you get assigned a rack for the duration of the class, and and not just for business hours. You can you know you get it for for after hours as well. Uh, and, and yes, you have uh, you have an IPS uh, available to you uh, as as part of the rack. Um, that that means uh, one of the appliance IPSs, not the uh, not the uh, uh, SSM module for the ASAs. That's that's not part of the security lab. Um, just the just the appliance is. So yeah, when you, when you do rack rentals or the classroom IPSs, you're using our same racks, and then they have an IPS in them. Okay. Does anybody uh, anybody have any uh, any other questions again about EasyVPN or about the the IE Security Lab in general? Okay. Um, I'm not uh, not seeing uh, anything come in. <clears throat> uh, w once again, I would I would urge everybody uh, if you are uh, either prepping for your for your lab or uh, just uh, a security professional in general that that security IE forum is uh, is is a really active uh, forum. It's it's not. Uh, it's not like something where you'll post a question and and wait a week. Uh, you'll you'll get immediate uh, or fairly immediate responses uh, to to whatever questions you have, and and it can really help cut through uh, some of the the learning curve that there is for for prepping for your your lab, or even if you're not prepping for the lab, uh, just needing general info or or specific info even about a particular feature, uh, whether it's Easy VPN or something else. Um, Anything that isn't easily asked in you know this this Q and A and and you may have uh, wanted to uh, to do it somewhere else uh, that that security IE forum is a is a great resource so I uh, I urge you to uh, to sign up for that and uh, and post anything. All right, so I guess that's it. Uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, for coming. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, like I said, a, a good topic, one that. Uh, is initially looks like it's going to be complex, but like anything else, once you break it down uh, and find out how each piece works, it's uh, it's not so uh, not so bad. Um, <clears throat> that's uh, that's it for the presentation, and uh, hopefully you got uh, some good information out of it. Uh, and uh, any further security presentations, webinars that we do, <clears throat> you are likely on the list, and uh, you'll get information about. Uh, 
uh, about those upcoming ones as well. So thanks a lot once again, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off.